In this video, we're going to look at how to use a capacitor with an ionic application. Uh, we're just going to be looking at the general workflow. Uh, we're going to see what it looks like when you're developing an application using capacitor. So most of what I'm going to be talking about won't be specific to ionic. Uh, we're going to use the ionic capacitor commands, uh, but you could just as easily use this information for a generic capacitor app built with anything. So what I have on screen now is just an Ionic application that I've just generated. Uh, it's just a standard blank application. And what we're going to do is first get capacitor enabled in here and then work through some of the commands. And so I'm currently working with the beta of Ionic 4. Uh, in the future, uh, capacitor integration will probably be enabled by default or you'll have an option to do that when you generate the project. Uh, but for now, we can just run the uh, Ionic integrations uh, command uh, to get that enabled. So if you just come into your project and write ionic integrations enable capacitor, that's going to set up that capacitor integration for you. So it's going to handle, uh, as you can see here, installing the capacitor core uh, library for you. And this is just going to handle all the setup that you need done. Uh, if you weren't using ionic, obviously you're not going to be able to use that ionic integrations command, in which case just follow the normal setup in the capacitor documentation. Okay, so now that that's finished generating, uh, if you come back into the project over here, you'll see uh, we have this capacitor.config.json file. So if we take a look, it's just a, a simple uh, configuration file here. Uh, there's not really too much you need to worry about doing in this file. Uh, it is important to take note of the app ID. Uh, this is the bundle ID that's going to be used uh, if you build this as say, an iOS application or an Android application. Uh, so you'll probably want to change this to something uh, specific to you or your company or, or your application. So for this, you usually use a, a reverse domain style uh, name. So it might be something like com.yourcompany.yourproject. Uh, and the other important thing here is the webdir or the web directory. And so this is just the folder uh, that you're telling Capacitor to pull in the web assets from. And so Capacitor is very similar to, uh, to Cordova in that uh, it's just running web code inside of a web view in a native application. And so Capacitor will handle creating the native application for you. And then it's just looking here to see well, where do you want us to pull in the web code from. And so this is the, the built output of your Ionic application. So when you're building with Capacitor, it's going to look for this www folder in your project here. And then it's going to pull in the web assets from there. And so if we look in the the folder structure here now you'll see that uh, a www folder isn't anywhere to be seen uh, that's because that uh, folder is only created after we do a build uh, of our application so to do that all we need to do is run the ionic build command or if you're creating your production your final uh, application you'll want to run ionic build uh, dash dash prod to create a production build uh, but we'll just do a, a development build for now so you run Ionic build and that's going to generate that www folder for you. And again, if you're not using Ionic, obviously you're not going to be able to use the Ionic build command. Uh, in that case, just do whatever it is you need to do to build your application to get your sort of final built output, your optimized output. And then whatever folder you're you know, outputting that final code to, just set that as the web directory or just create that directory as www uh, in your project. And now that, that ionic build command is finished, we can see we have that www folder now, and that contains all of the built output for the application. And so everything inside of here is actually what we'll be running. You know, say if you build your iOS application, this is what uh, code is going to be run. All the rest of your project is never included in that native application. It's just this www folder. So now that we have capacitor set up, we've got our web directory created here with our built output. Uh, we can tell Capacitor to copy that over to the native project, and then we can open it in Xcode or Android Studio to do a build. So before we can actually use iOS or uh, the Android platform, we'll need to add those as platforms in our project. So to do that, uh, let's say if we want to add the iOS platform, we'll just run ionic cap open, uh, sorry, not open, ionic cap add iOS. And that's going to handle uh, adding the iOS platform for us. And if we just look at some of the uh, messages that popped up here, uh, you can see that it says it's copying web assets from the www folder to iOS app public. Uh, it's doing a bunch of other stuff in here as well. It hasn't found any plugins, so nothing has been included there. 
And so since we already have that www folder created, uh, it's automatically copying our web assets for us, but we're going to talk about how to do that manually afterwards as well. And so whilst we're here, let's also add the Android platform. So you just be able to run Ionic cap add Android. And so I'm using the Ionic cap command here, which is just a, a shortcut for using the capacitor commands in an Ionic application. Uh, if you're not using Ionic, again, obviously you can't use Ionic cap, uh, but you could just use the standard MPX cap command instead. Uh, but aside from that, it's basically, you'll be running the same commands, just, you know, you won't be using Ionic cap. Okay, so now the Android platform has been added as well. Uh, again, you can see it's copying the web assets from www to the Android platform. And again, there hasn't been any plugins found because there's no plugins installed in this project. But we now have both our iOS platform and the Android platform set up. So unlike something like Cordova, where a lot of the work happens in, in the command line, if you wanted to run your application, for example, you'd run it through here. Uh, with Capacitor, there's more focus on using the, I guess, the default native tools. So using Xcode and Android Studio. So basically, most of what Capacitor does is it just sets up your native project and it handles copying the assets from uh, from your project, so the web assets or any plugins, and it handles setting those up in the native project. But if we want to, say, run a test build, we would just open that up in Xcode or Android Studio. So let's say, for example, I want to run my iOS application on the device. I could just run Ionic cap open iOS. That's going to open my project inside of uh, Xcode. And so once you're inside of Xcode, uh, you'll be able to really do anything with the native project that you could with any native project. Uh, but you don't need to uh, understand any of that. There's very little you actually have to do in Xcode, although you can do quite a bit. Uh, but for a lot of people, that's just going to be, you know, you're going to want to run your application on a device. You're going to want to do the final, the final build of the application and get it signed. Uh, but for the most part, you're just going to be opening up your application in Xcode using Ionic Cap Open iOS or NPX Cap uh, Open iOS if you're not using Ionic. And once you're in here, you'll just be able to uh, you'll be able to select you know what you want to run the application on. You could use one of the uh, emulators, or if you've got your device connected via USB, you could just select that in here, hit play, and that's going to run that on your device, and you'll be able to debug it or uh, do whatever you want with it. And it's the same for uh, the Android platform. Uh, if we run Ionic Cap Open Android, uh, that's just going to open up our native Android project inside of Android Studio. And so when you open that, it's going to do all the, the Gradle sync stuff it does with just normal Android uh, projects. Uh, but again, if you want to run this application on your device, you're just going to uh, plug it in via USB or you can use one of the uh, emulators and just click this uh, play button here. And it's going to let you select where you, uh, where you want to run the application. And again, when it comes to doing the final build of your application, uh, you can also use Android Studio uh, to handle that. So what will typically happen with your development workflow here is that for the most part, you're going to be working inside of your standard Ionic application or whatever uh, web application you're building. You do most of the work in here, uh, but obviously at some point we need to get that uh, code over into our native application. And so anytime that you make a change to any of the, uh, to the web code, if you're changing your templates or your TypeScript files, you're adding uh, images in your assets folder, uh, basically any change you're making to the actual, uh, the web code of the Ionic application, you'll need to use the MPX cap copy or Ionic cap copy command to perform this step. Uh, to copy the web assets from www to the native projects. You can just run ionic cap uh, copy. And you can see that's running the capacitor copy command and that's going to copy the web assets from the www folder to uh, the native Android project and to the native iOS project. And remember, you actually have to do a build uh, before that works. Uh, if you make any changes in here, it's not gonna be reflected in the actual output uh, of your application until you run the build command because that's what's being copied, uh, copied over. And the other thing you need to keep in mind is if you're using native plugins because uh, they also need to be copied over to the native project. So I've just got up uh, an example native plugin here from uh, from Ionic Native, the crop uh, plugin. I basically just chose this one at random. And so if you look at the installation steps here, it says to run Ionic Cordova plugin add Cordova plugin crop. So with 
capacity, you can still use most Cordova plugins, uh, but you won't use the Cordova plugin add command to add those. Uh, instead, you just run it as a standard npm install command. So in this case, I'd run npm install Cordova plugin crop. So let's just do that now. So hit enter to save that uh, into our project or to install it into the project. And if you like, you can still use um, the Ionic native library to uh, manage these plugins as well in your application if you like using the Ionic native API. Uh, but also do keep in mind that Capacitor also has its own inbuilt APIs that you can use as well. Uh, but in this particular instance, uh, Capacitor doesn't have its own crop API, so you could install this plugin. Uh, you could just use the standard Cordova syntax to use it. Or if there is an Ionic native wrapper available, you can install that and use that as well. Okay, so that, uh, that plugin's finished installing now. Uh, but at this point in time, it's not actually set up in our native project. So just like with the Ionic cap copy command that we use to copy the web assets over, if we make any changes to the plugins, we'll need to run Ionic cap update. And you can see here it says it found one Cordova plugin for Android and it's copied that over. And it also found a Cordova plugin for iOS, which is the, the crop plugin that we just installed. And now that we've run that command, that's been successfully copied uh, over to our native projects. So you can use those two commands separately. You can use Ionic uh, cap copy and ionic cap update to copy those things over separately. You can also just run the ionic cap sync command and that is going to both copy the web assets and it's going to check for any native plugins and copy those as well. So if you just want to do both things in one hit, run ionic cap sync or if you just want to remember the one thing, you can just run this all the time if you want. Okay, so those basic steps that I've gone through in this video is most of what you'll need to know to work with Capacitor. Uh, really the only time you're going to need to know anything more than what we've discussed is when you're uh, doing the final build of your application and you're trying to you know, set up signing and the, uh, the app resources like the icons and the splash screen and that kind of thing. Uh, but the general workflow is basically what I've shown you here. You just mostly work inside of your standard Ionic application or whatever you, uh, you're using. Uh, when you're ready to run and test that on a device, you just copy over the assets to the native project and you run it through Xcode or Android Studio. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, if you want to check out my book, which uh, covers Capacitor in a lot of depth, uh, there's a link to that in the description, as well as my Twitter and stuff like that if you want to follow me on social media. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.